our last team in the NFC South. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the narrative we have is, can they repeat the success that they saw in 2023? They have a new offensive coordinator to work with Baker. Uh, he was at Kentucky, I believe, with Liam Cohen. He was also on the Rams staff for a little bit with McVay. I like the Buccaneers. I think they're good. I have liked kind of their drafts over the last couple of years. And I think bringing back Mike Evans was the right move. I will say, though, I just, I get a little worried about Todd Bowles. I think they overperformed last year um, in what they did based on the roster and how far they went in the playoffs. And I think that it's like weird because I don't think Todd Bowles is on the hot seat, but I do think it's like, I do think there's a general belief around fans that he really is not the future coach of this team. Well, it's like, here's the problem with the whole thing, Hunter, is realistically, you know, ever since Bruce went up, right, and, and moved up in, in that building and said, you know, coaching just, right, he's not going to want to be like coaching more, a little too much. I want to pass reins on to someone else. Ever since that happened, I think Bucks fans have, have already felt that way about Todd Bowles. And you know what? To, to Todd Bowles' defense, he was put into a very tough position, right? Like, it's a very tough position to go from – being a coordinator to the coach who just got done coaching the greatest player in the history of the sport and then leaving with with their second Lombardi trophy on their shoulder and riding off into the sunset, right? Like it's pretty tough to come into that situation and rectify it and get back to that same standard that the fans have come to expect at that point or that's grown on fans. So from that perspective, I want to give all the credit to Todd Bowles that he stepped into a very tough situation and honestly has lasted probably a lot longer than a lot of people would have lasted in this position, right? But back to reality is that no matter how much that it's admirable that he has lasted this long, it's also realistic that the Bucs are, are, are very much in almost that same kind of category, perhaps, as the Saints and the Titans, where you just don't really know how to feel about them, right? Because again, and I know and I can already hear Bucks fans in the comments, like what about last year when we beat the Eagles in the playoffs? Dog, come on. We could have taken, we could have taken, uh, uh, we could have taken the Panthers at that point with how the Eagles were playing. I think we might've gotten a good game. The writing That's was insane. on the wall. <laughs> the writing was on the wall that the Eagles were going to choke and miserably just have a horrible end of the season. Not, not to take anything away from you guys. You guys were just the ones that got to really give them that last uppercut to the jaw when they were already wobbling on the ropes, right? I mean, that's kind of just the reality of the situation. So not taking anything away from them, but it was it was expected given how the Eagles were literally collapsing and choking. So now all of a sudden we're in a situation where the Bucks are like, you know, it's just like, how do you feel about them? Like, like they're a good team. They can make the playoffs. They could win the division, but back to the Falcons, right? Like, are they going all the way? Do you feel great about the long-term like window of this team? I think they fit very much into that same category. It, it kind of, and the NFC South as a whole. Oh yeah. I was going to say, why is it consistently a clusterfuck? Like, why is it always like, what is going on in the South? Like, what, you know, like, it always is. Everyone's always good. Everyone always sucks. Everyone's always in the middle. What's going on here, Hunter? Like, is is the NFC South the most mid division in football? Anyway, no more like more like is the NFC South the most cohesive division? Because whenever one of them is doing something, they're all doing the same thing. Yeah, it's it's a weird division for sure. I mean, I would love to see Baker succeed here. And, you know, with the core of Rashad White, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, I saw some good things from Trey Palmer. You know, Tristan Wirfs is about to get a massive extension. You take Graham Barton, who's one of the most versatile interior old linemen in the draft. Like, they have done, like, all right for themselves on the offensive side of the ball. And when you have guys like Avita Vea, Kalijah Kansi, um, I do think that they do have good players on defense, even with the Jamel Dean and a Jordan Whitehead, Antone, a a Antoine Winfield Jr., I I think the Bucks will be fine, but I don't think they're repeating the success that they had last year, unfortunately. Yeah, no. And you know, one thing I do want to really touch on with the Bucks, and, and but look, Bucks fans will agree with this wholeheartedly. There, there's not 
anything about this. It's unobjectively true. The big problem with how the Bucks built this team over the last three or four years and kind of maybe perhaps how and why we're in the situation we're in now is that with their first round picks, and I, I can't fault them. They were riding high coming off a Lombardi win. I mean, what what better time than to perhaps take shots on guys where they have super high upsides? But what they did is, whenever, since they won the Super Bowl here, is I feel like that they took, not only, I'm not saying shots in the dark, but they definitely reached on prospects with incredibly high athletic upsides that just haven't turned into the football players that they expected them to. And almost all of them have been... Um, defensive line players right like like defensive line depth and when you're consistently taking guys in the first round that end up bringing third or fourth round value to your team which is basically exactly what the bucks have done over the last three or four years i think you can we can really kind of circle back to that is kind of how we've gotten to this point is that if the bucks hit on all of those first round picks anyway let me be clear no team is hitting on all their first round picks. That's not a knock on the box, right? I mean, it's very, it's, it, it's hard to even hit on one every three years, realistically with, with how much of a shit shoot the draft can be, but they've kind of missed on all of them realistically. And when you do that, you kind of end up in a situation where if your premium picks aren't playing like premium picks, you kind of middle out like this. And, and that's kind of really to wrap it all together, I think, would you agree, Hunter, that's kind of the, the the catalyst to how this, where this roster has ended up in this situation? Yeah, I haven't, you know, I, I do like their drafts, but, like, I don't love them, you know? I, know it's, I, it's like, I like the, the, little, the, the later, like, middle rounds and stuff, it's all, like, they've been hitting on, like, the depth. It's more just, like, the home run guys, just they haven't relived up to the home run the home run pick. Like, you know, you could look at guys like Joe Ty- Tyron Shyinka, right? Even look, and again, there's still time for him, but I think you could say Logan Hall definitely hasn't been what you thought he was going to be at all. And and even guy with even more time, right? Like Kalijah Kansi could make a huge jump this year. And I don't want to write him off yet, but be at a pretty rough rookie year all in all. So, you know, if, if all three of those guys end up busting out and I hate using that word, Let's fuck busting out. If they don't end up bringing first round value, you know, I think that's kind of what I'm going to look back on and say that that's what hindered the development of this team. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting year for them. I think it could be a year where if things don't go, I think if the Bucks don't make the playoffs, I think they might have a new coach next year. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing is it's almost in a weird way. This I, is a good... I, I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about I think they would give him one more year. I do think they would give him one more year just with how the Bucks operate. Maybe, but here's the thing too. I just want to say like, assuming that the form of what you said is true. Excuse me. Assuming, assuming the form of what you said is true. I think if you're a Bucks fan, realistically, this season is kind of a win no matter what, because you have a bad year and a lot of the fans really don't think Todd Bowles is the guy still, right? So so if you don't have a good year, Todd Bowles out the door and you have a new window with a new coach that you have more faith in perhaps. And if you have a really good season and Todd Bowles shatters expectations and all of a sudden Todd Bowles is the coach of the future, that's equally as big of a win. So if you're a Bucks fan, you're kind of in this good zone where no matter what, you won a Super Bowl recently, Maybe we got to readdress the coach. And if we do, we got good faith. And if not, well, we're, we're right back to being a winning franchise that's been consistently winning franchise. So it's a win-win in, in a sense here. My, I'm most excited to just see how the offense functions with the new OC. I want to see. Yeah, that is definitely going to be the big thing. With Baker. The big thing is going to see how much Canales really was, was really propping up Baker. But thank you guys so much for watching this has been team previews for every team in the nfc south if you don't know ball and want to know ball be sure to subscribe leave a like let us know in the comments who you think will win the nfc south as always thank you so much for watching you can watch the rest of the team previews on our channel so far we have the nfc and afc east the nfc and afc south and the nfc and afc north afc and nfc west are coming thank you guys so much